Welcome to Hoaxie Gardens and Homestead. Today I want to talk to you about canning. Canning is the best thing that you can do to preserve your harvest through the year. Um, it is uh, the healthiest way to get your food instead of going to the store and buying their canned food. This way you know what went into it. You're not having to add all the long list of stuff that's on the back of those cans to uh, make sure that your food's going to taste like they want it to taste. You know what your food's going to taste like the way you want it to taste because you've picked it at the peak of harvest and you know what's going into your can. You can control your sugars and your salts when you do your own canning. Uh, there are many canning books out there. The Ball Canning Book, uh, the Amish Canning Book. Uh, can't list the numbers of books that are out there with tested, tried, recipes that are safe for you to do. Um, there is a recipe to canning. You can't just necessarily cook your own food and put it in the canner with your own home recipes. It may not have the balance of acidity and the different things that it needs to, uh, to can correctly, to process correctly. So I do encourage you to get a recipe from a canning book and follow that so that you'll have uh, your food will be safe and you know that you're doing it in a correct manner. Um, if you're able, a lot of the extensions uh, around the country give classes on canning. I would encourage you to do that. Find a place where you can go and then you'll have a better idea of what to do and, and the balance that's needed in the canning process. Um, canning uh, is not something to be scared of. Now you do need to be concerned because there are some serious consequences to not doing things properly and one is the scariest and that's botulism because it has some life-threatening uh, consequences but we just had a recall here recently from a very common food that people go all the time to buy especially if you like nachos the cheese and um, which I don't buy but I do know a lot of people who do and it was recalled because of botulism. So theirs isn't always so safe either, but you can control that with proper procedures. You wanna be sure that the area that you're working in has been really cleaned. You wanna be sure that your food is really clean. So when you bring your vegetables and your fruits in, you want to clean them really, really well. What I do is I load a one of my sinks full of water. Now, I, a lot of people say hot water or warm water or whatever. You have some delicate greens and stuff like that. That's not going to go well. So I always use just tap water. And I put about a fourth of a cup of baking soda in it. Mix that up really, really well. Then I put my food in it and I let it soak for 15 or 20 minutes or longer if I'm cleaning or whatever. It really doesn't matter as long as it's in for at least 15 minutes and then as I take it out I scrub it really really well and I sit it in the other sink once I get through I let the water out I clean that side really good and then I fill it back up with water again um, if this if it's greens and delicate food I will rinse it there in the sink and then I'll put it over on a towel to dry and then this is a towel that has been freshly washed and cleaned so that you know that it is sterile and um, I'll put it over on the towel to dry. The hardier ones like say this pumpkin, if I was to can something like this, which I'm not gonna do, but if I was to, I would scrub it up really good and then I would rinse it under running water as I'm scrubbing it up again. Because so I want to be sure something like that is really, really clean. Um, it's the delicate things that I'll put through a rinse in the sink, uh, filling it up again. That way you know that your food is clean and there you're making sure that nothing is going to be getting into your canning process that shouldn't be there. Also, sterilizing your jars, your rings. You want to test your rings. Look at your rings. If you're seeing any things start blackening on here or any rust coming on, I don't know if you can see that or not, but if you see any of the blackening or the rust, you want to get rid of them. Now, I keep them because I will store things in my refrigerator and for storing in your refrigerator this is going to be okay but for canning 
is it's not going to be okay. You don't want that getting into your food and into your canning process. Your jars, you want to wash your jars very, very well. If you have a dishwasher, now I will wash mine beforehand and then I put them in the dishwasher. The reason I put them in the dishwasher after washing them is because the temperature gets really high in the dishwasher and they're sterilized in the dishwasher. You want to put your rings in there also because you want your rings sterilized. Now don't leave them in your washer to dry the rings because they will rust. As soon as the dishwasher is through, you want to get those out and you want to wipe those down. Put them over on your towel to uh, dry and wait for your canning. I want to talk about the different types of canners. You have um, water bath canners and you have pressure canners. The pressure canners, there are two different kinds, which I have both. This is the gauged, which you'll get it up to a certain temperature. For me in my area, that's 10 pounds. Although you actually go just past that, it'll be 11 pounds. Why they don't say 11, I don't know. But anyway, um, you do that. Now, um, once you get your jars and everything, your food done, you're in your jars, in your canner, you're going to put your lid on. And then you're going to let it, uh, you will start seeing steam come out of this vent right here, whether it's... Um, the gauged or the weighted, you're going to see steam coming out of the vent. And you're going to let that steam come out for 10 minutes. And then, um, then you will put your weight on, because even your gauge has a weight. Now when you put this on, that steam will burn your hand. So um, it is very wise to have one of your hot mitts on. Uh, I have one that's glove-like and takes temperatures to 450, I think it is. And so that's what I wear because, believe you me, I have burnt myself <laughs> several times canning. And I finally got wise and I don't uh, do things barehanded anymore. So uh, you'll put that weight on. Then you'll bring it up to temperature and then you'll hold it at that temperature. And you will have to adjust a little bit. If you have a gas stove, it's not as bad as it is with an electric, but uh, you do have to adjust a little to keep it at that temperature. Once it really gets to five pounds here, once it starts there, I start easing my temperature down till it gets to what I need it to, and then I, I'm uh, less likely to have to up and down, up and down. I can hold it. I really know where my sweet spot is, So, and you will learn that on yours also. Then on the weighted, and it's called weighted because it doesn't have the gauge, it has weights. Each one, this is five, you put on another, that's 10, you put on another, and that's 15. How do you know how much weight you will need? You will, your recipe will tell you whether you need 5, 10, whatever, and uh, 15. You will also look at your altitude, where you're located, and you will adjust it to that. Inside any good canning book, it is going to have that uh, somewhere, whether in the front or in the back of the book. It will have that altitude gauge so that you can look and say, okay, well, this is where I'm at. And so I know that I need to adjust. If it says 10 pounds of pressure, I may need 15. So uh, you will adjust according to your altitude. Um, another canning, uh, another canner that I have is uh, the water baths that I use for my larger jars. I will use my weighted can without the weights. I will use that for water baths for pints and smaller. Uh, it is okay to do that. Um, I went to a canning class who talked about that and showed us uh, where the water would need to go because you don't have to cover it when you're using your pressure canner. Uh, you just go to the shoulder. I'll show you what that shoulder is in another video. Uh, but I would like to show you my other two canners. Um, and these I really use outside. These are for the quart jars uh, for water bath canning. Quart jars go in this uh, if you're doing pressure canning. But in the water bath canning, because I use this, I need a different canner for my jars. So I have this one. Uh, I'm sure you've seen these. I have a couple of these for water bath. I use them outside on my propane 
stove. It has the metal on the inside, which is very important. You have to have something in the bottom. You do not want your jars sitting on the pan and right on the fire. If you buy a pressure canner or a water bath at a garage sale or a thrift store, I mean, that's fine, but make sure that inside they have the bottom. If not, you can, like this is a, a press stone, you can go online and you can order, because you'll have to order seals and stuff like that, which is something you'll have to have checked. Um, I take my canner up to our Ag Extension once a year. I have them check to make sure my gauge is calibrated and coming up to the temperature that it's supposed to come up. Just because it says it is doesn't necessarily mean that it is. So I always get mine checked. They'll also tell you at that time, because you're going to know if your seal's no good because you're going to be getting water leakage down here. And so you'll have to replace the seal, which is here around the inside. You have to have a good seal, so you have to keep up with your seal, making sure that it is good. Both of the canners have to have something in the bottom. The water canner, now that rack is your metal on that. Now, I also can, in the larger jars, I'll make pickles and, and peppers and stuff like that that I'll do in larger jars. So I have this canner, but this too, and this is a water bath, and I use this outside. But this one also has the metal in the bottom. And you have to have that or your jars will bust, and that's no good. Your jars bust, you've wasted the food, you've wasted your time, and it could also be kind of dangerous. So, um, there you go. Those are the different canners that I have and the purposes for them and how I use them. And so I want to encourage you with your garden, with your produce coming in, um, be sure you do some canning for your family. It is the, it's the best fast food that you're going to have. I can everything that I can think of. Um, I, I make sloppy joes and have them in the can ready to go. So all i got to do is take it out, put it on the oven, heat it up, put it on buns. Uh, that's a great thing to do. Of course, my chilies, I have a beef stew that I, uh, that I put in there. The chicken noodle soup. Of course, I don't put the noodles. You don't want to put the noodles in it. But uh, when you're heating it up on the stove, you put the noodles in and they're done like that, right? Um, I can all kinds of things. So uh, I would encourage you, get a book, get creative, can your harvest, and um, that way you'll have it throughout the year. You'll know where it came from, you'll know what's in it, and you'll know the quality of it. You'll also be able to stay away from GMO. We don't want anything genetic modified organisms in our food. It's not good for your body. And so uh, you want to be sure and stay away from that. When you grow your own and you have your own seeds that are non-GMO, you know your food is safe, you know your food is healthy. You pick it at the peak of season so you know it's got the best nutrition in it. You control your sugar, you control your salt, so um, it, it's just a, a good thing all the way around. It's the way that you preserve your harvest through the year, not just at the time you're pulling it out of the garden. It would be nice if we could do that year round, but we can't uh, on certain things. We can't have a garden year round. There's maybe two months here in Texas that we really can't grow anything. But that's something that I'm going to talk about in the future because there are things that will go through winter. There are things that will be uh, during, that will grow during those two month times after winter, before spring, you know, that period that most people think nothing grows. What do you think that they did back in the old days when they depended on their garden for their food? Yes, they preserved differently than we do today, but they did preserve their food. But they couldn't keep it year-round. They did have things that grew year-round and those were the things that they depended on during that time um, when it was like famine. You know, there was no food out there except for what they were able to save from their harvest. 
Uh, I will do, maybe I'll do a video later on dehydrating because that is another great way to preserve your harvest. And um, thank you for joining me. If you enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up. Share the video so the information can get out there. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again soon.